Hello and welcome to Ciara Exchange Virtual Roadshow 2021. Thank you for joining. And this session today is with the Royal Bank of Canada. So today we're going to hear from Canada's largest bank about how they get a real-time view of their contact center CX. Very impressive stuff. I'm very excited. My name is Amy Hudson. I lead up our Global Center of Excellence, and I'm joined today by Ryan Rave, who's Director of DevOps and Engineering Transformation for RBC's Contact Center, and Victor Wong, who's our Senior Manager of Client Engagement Development and Operations at RBC as well. Uh, so we'll start with introductions and we'll jump right in. Ryan, I remember when we did our consulting project years ago to help you guys kick off this transformation you were going through. And I'm so excited for this audience today to hear more about where you've gotten the organization and actually get to, to see things a bit. So Ryan, could you start us off with just an introduction and then Victor, you could do the same. Thank you, Amy. Uh, good to see you again. Uh, yeah, so um, just to give you a bit of background on myself, I started at the bank in 2004. Um, I started as a help desk analyst, and a couple years after that, I moved into a role where I was supporting um, the help desk as a business, bringing in um, support from the rest of the organization to the call center. Um, and from there, I kind of had a fascination with with call centers and technologies and just how how everything kind of all comes together to provide that sort of support to our customers so i, I made it my mission to move into contact center technology into the contact center technology team uh, because i wanted to be a part of the group that kind of owns that technology and, and helps power our, our call centers um, so when i first moved into cct i was um, heavily involved in the support side of the operation for a couple of years and at that time, we were early adopters of ITIL, and uh, one of one of the major things I did while in that role was um, get all all of our support processes structured around you know the ITIL best practices, so proper incident and problem management. The other notable thing that happened while I was in that role was we were shifting from a Nortel based call center solution to an IP based one. And that was um, important and scary because at the time, VoIP was uh, relatively new in the market for call centers as large as ours. So it was around that time in 2011 where we first started working with Sierra. And um, you know the main reason behind that was because we, we needed to make sure that the new solution we were deploying was able to um, scale to the you know worst anticipated loads that we were going to put on the environment. So um, a little while later, I moved out of that role into a leadership role in one of our application development teams where um, we started converting our, our older desktop-based applications to cloud-native apps and microservices. And um, that's when we started down the path of DevOps and automation and automated deployments. Um, and then after some time there, I moved into my current role. And uh, in my current role, I'm accountable for all things um, automation, DevOps, um, maintenance automation, and primarily accountable for you know driving that change and all of the facets of our software development from you know which technologies we use, the developer culture. Um, our big emphasis is on reducing toil. So what we try to do is find friction in the development process and remove it through automation or through you know some some form of tooling. Fantastic. And and a lot of transformation you, you have driven um, in at least the time that I've known you. So great. Now, Victor, could you give us um, a quick explanation of your role as well? Yeah, sure. Um, thank you, Amy. Um, so my name is Victor Wong, and I have been with the bank for uh, about f uh, 15 years with experience in meeting the application development and the day to operation for different business applications from the uh, capital market, uh, wealth management, business online banking. My partnership with Ciara start with the, my previous position, which I was responsible to drive the customer experience monitoring within contact center technology. So with my current position, I provide technical leadership and the, I'm also accountable for the, um, life cycle management of the virtual assistant NLU IDR system that it's uh, actually serving as the front door to RBC, receiving and routing 10 of millions of customer interaction every year. And it's critical to the success of the Advice uh, Center operation. That's great. Great. Thank you so much. So we're very happy to have you today, and I appreciate you sharing with us all today. So obviously, as the largest bank in Canada, your contact center is an important touch point for many, many customers. Could you give us just a brief overview of the contact center our operations there at RBC? Yeah, sure. So we have four major contact center locations and a number of smaller hub locations across the country. 
uh, we support approximately 6,000 agents uh, for different business capabilities from everyday banking to insurance to investing and to collections. Most of our agents at this time, um, they are working remotely due to the pandemic situation, which in itself is an amazing uh, achievement for us to be able to transform the workforce landscape for the advisor to get them safely home and to provide ongoing support in their remote locations. Yeah, I, I believe that that was quite an undertaking, so fantastic. And Ryan, I'll shift over to you quickly. Now, I know you've been using Ciara for quite some time now. Talk to us a little bit about how your use of Ciara has evolved over the years. Sure. So as I was sort of alluding to earlier, initially our main focus was on uh, performance and stress testing of the environment. So in those early days, Sierra was really instrumental in helping us to identify any weaknesses in the, in the new system that we were deploying. Um, so we would do frequent load testing of the production environment. And, you know, each one of those tests really found a new soft spot um, that, you know, that we had to address. So it was great in that we were able to find those problems early on and, and really, um, res you know, resolve them or harden the solution in such a way that it would prevent it from becoming a, a real time or a, sorry, a real client impacting issue in the future. Um, it was also around that time that we started working on automating all of our IVR and routing strategy test cases. Um, and what this really allowed our teams to do was to, to provide a, a level of test coverage that was never possible before when we were doing things manually. And the result of that gave us a significantly greater confidence in the changes that we were rolling out to production, and it allowed us to get those changes out to prod um, significantly faster than we were ever able to do before. Um, Victor, do you want to talk a little bit about what we've done in recent years? Uh, in the recent years, we have been focusing heavily on monitoring. Um, while we can instrument on our, all our system pretty well from a technical pers landscape perspective, but we knew that uh, there are issues out there we could uh, could not simply detect with our own tools. So we started working with Ciara to create a number of CX monitoring campaigns that allow us to reproduce what's happening from the customer experience perspective in a technology agnostic way. The fact is that there are a lot of upstream components um, outside of our line of sight from carriers to the RBC network infrastructure um, that we don't have any uh, information about. And with the Ciara's proactive six monitoring, that allow us to um, provide the end-to-end -end coverage by following exact journey that a customer will take in order for us to find out and isolate the problems impacting our customer that we, we, we never knew we had. That's that's excellent. Um, I really like how you, Ryan and Victor, you called out the use of, of the entire platform over time, right? From load testing to, to, to regression and now onto this live customer experience perspective monitoring, which is fantastic. Um, just, just to kind of double click into that a little bit more, um, I know particularly Ryan using Ciara Pulse, the, the real-time CX monitoring. Can you tell us a little bit about some latest developments there? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, from an operations perspective, one of the bigger challenges that we had is that each of our systems, uh, each of our core systems that drive the call center had, had its own sort of view into what was happening in that system, its own dashboard. And, you know, some of them were better than others. They all had different levels of detail. And so it was very challenging to understand what was happening from an operations perspective in the call center at any given point. You know, someone would have, would have to go in and, to, and log into these you know, six, seven different tools and try to stitch it all together to, to really get a clear picture of what was happening. And it made it difficult for us, especially when troubleshooting incidents, to understand what was happening um, from a technology perspective, from a business perspective. And so um, we tried to solve that challenge by by centralizing all of the data from these various systems into a single data store. And then from there, we were able to build out multi-source displays that allow us to see all of this data from our systems in one place. Um, so we did that about a year ago, and we called it Cerebro. If you don't get the reference, think about X-Men and Professor X. <laughs> and it sort of started as a joke, but truly it's lived up to its name. We, we, can, we can now see in one place exactly what's happening in our call centers from sort of all facets of the call center, from agent behavior to call volumes, uh, CX health monitoring, and even um, a, a quick overview into what's happening from a technical monitoring perspective. So it's been really interesting to see how this tool has been used over the last 12 months. Um, you know, initially it was just a display that 
we would look at occasionally to now where when we have an incident, um, you know, I can jump into our Slack channel and see people sharing screenshots of the display and circling certain areas to, to, to mm -hmm. highlight what's happening and what the impact is and, and really get our teams focusing on the right area uh, much sooner than we did before and, and uh, much more efficiently than we did before. It's very, that's very cool. Um, that's kind of what I meant at the beginning of the session. Really impressive stuff happening there. So I'll ask the question that everybody probably is wanting to ask. Would you be willing to give us a quick look? Sure, yeah, I can definitely showcase a little bit here. All right, so what you're seeing here is um, a view into our lab version of this display. So um, unfortunately, because of the low volumes of data, um, the displays don't look you know, as clean as they would in prod. Um, maybe we can share a screenshot after to, to illustrate what that would look like. Um, we're actually using Sierra right now to drive these calls into the lab environment for the purpose of this demo, so that's kind of a neat benefit. Um, so what you're seeing on this display is uh, a view into calls entered into queue, how many are answered, um, how many calls we've had abandoned, any, any calls that are currently waiting. Uh, moving down, we'll see we can see calls answered um, and abandoned in an hourly trend kind of uh, view. Um, what our agents are doing, if they're ready, waiting for a call, not ready, if they're in after call work or if they're busy on a call. Um, and we can see a breakdown of number of calls coming in by different lines of business, as well as, um, you know, kind of some real time stats around how the calls are being handled, talk time, hold time, average uh, after call work time. And then here we can see some stats around um, callbacks. So, you know, some of our customers will opt to, to receive a callback versus waiting in queue. So that's what you can see here. And on the top right is the interesting piece that I think is the central piece of this discussion is how we're integrating with Sierra Pulse. So Sierra um, offers a very powerful set of APIs that you can do a lot with. And what we discovered is that we can pull in all kinds of data from the Pulse environment and, and bring it into our data store. So we're able to create this display that shows us all of our CX uh, campaigns running in real time and uh, whether or not any of them are failing. So if we've had one fail with a satisfactory result, the tile will go amber. And if it fails entirely, then it'll uh, it'll go red. And then from here, um, you know, I can whichever one has failed, I can click on it. And it'll actually take me right into Pulse so I can see uh, what's happening and drill into those details. The other interesting dis display that we created that's helped us a lot in terms of analyzing what's happening um, is this one. So basically, this is all the data that I'm retrieving from the Sierra Pulse environment. And, and I'm just displaying it in different ways. So here, for example, we can see um, any test case that has failed more than once, and it sorts it by how many times it's failed in the last seven days. So, you know, for instance, this might be something that we want to look into. Uh, could mean we have a system problem, could mean we have to tweak our test case in some way. Um, this gives us a bit of a sense on, you know, failure trends. And then this table here is really the more, the more powerful piece where we see oops, only the failed details uh, of each test case. So it really helps with doing analysis on what's happening in each test case, exactly why it failed and where we need to pay attention, where we need to start looking into. Fantastic. It's a real, it's a real wealth of information, very kind of neatly displayed in a way that um, you can be actionable with, I would say. Um, in terms of results that you've seen, are there any specific um, results that you'd want to highlight for the group? Yeah, certainly. So how this has been really beneficial for us, you know, on top of being able to tie all the information into one place, is that um, in the past, if we had, for example, a pulse test case fail, we would know that we had something to look into there, but we weren't necessarily able to speak to how that's Im impacting the business. So what we can now see when we have a failure or multiple failures is exactly how that translates into an issue for the business, like whether it be a spike in uh, calls abandoned or wait times or what have you. We can, we can tell that full story now just from a single view. And I, that's interesting. And I bet that that has then impacted your overall customer experiences as well, being able to have that information. Yeah, absolutely. So. Because we have this, and uh, and by the way, in the background, we're using all this data that we're collecting to feed um, some machine learning jobs in the background. So it's actually learning mm -hmm. 
all of our, our normal trends. Um, and if there is an anomaly in terms of volume or what have you, it'll actually trigger an alert. But um, so between this and those machine learning jobs running in the background, we, we generally know about issues a lot earlier. And, and even some wow. issues that we never knew we had, I think to your point in the opening comments. Um, so it allows us to really get on top of that quickly. And it allows us to um, advise the business <clears throat> exactly what's happening so that they can make any operational changes they need to, to, to kind of deal with whatever outage is taking place. Um, but I mean, ultimately, because we're uh, aware sooner, we can react sooner. And we, we, we end up resolving those issues sooner. So I think from a customer experience perspective, it's, it's been very powerful that way. That's amazing. So not only is it synthesizing what's happening in the real time to light act, it's getting smarter in the background. And there's a sense of, um, uh, there's a predictive nature to it now in a way, which is it's fascinating to me. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, I hope I hope the audience enjoyed that as much as I did to see the, the fruits of your labor over the years. Um, Victor, I guess I'll turn it over to you just to talk through any lessons learned along the way or recommendations for folks who might be with us today who are just getting started with automating kind of their CX assurance. Okay, so uh, I, I will call out the scope is a key. So any CX monitoring um, should be covering the end-to-end -end customer journey, including the frequent test of a connection test of um, making sure the IBR pick up, picks up the call periodical functional, functionality testing of the self-serve capability and the routing logic for customer simulation. But it is also important to uh, consider the size of the interaction as well, um, such as like, uh, can the call be picked up within a few seconds? What are the voice quality uh, on both ends of the call? And also like what is the expected uh, attached data? Uh, can that be present on the agent desktop? Um, another key aspect of the CX monitoring um, is requiring the uh, continuous analysis of the test result and fine tuning of the uh, to improve the test quality. You often start with an assumption on how the production system behavior should be. And over the time, you can validate the assumption um, and, and to find the right amount, the right balance for the threshold in order to, um, uh, based on the real life scenario. Um, just to remember, um, every system is unique and have different requirements. There is no one size fits all solution for the um, CX monitoring. It is important to do this fine tuning exercise in order to benefit from the CX monitoring and to avoid any alert fatigue that may be caused by the false positive. Another advice is to watch out for the uh, port utilization and to spread your testing uh, throughout the day or throughout the hours in order to avoid overrunning your port consumption and to maximize your benefit. Excellent. Okay, very, very helpful. I appreciate that. Um, so now as we think about, you've accomplished so much to date, clearly very useful setup you have there. What about future plans? What's going to help you keep evolving your automation and, and stay uh, stay ahead as you like to be at RBC? Yeah, that's a great question. So on the Pulse side of things, um, you know, I've been working with Victor on this uh, since he's got the most experience with Pulse. Um, you know, where we really want to go is enhance the coverage that we do today. So we want to make sure that um, the agent side of the interaction is as expected. Um, all of the correct uh, attached data to a call is coming through and being passed to the advisor. We want to get further into the routing strategy, make sure calls are routing where they're supposed to based on the logic of the routing. Um, and we'll also um, likely look into to figuring out how we can use a failed pulse test case as an indicator of an issue that we already know how to resolve and can implement some self-healing behind it. So imagine <clears throat> pulse finds a, an issue and it kicks off a job in the background that automatically resolves the problem all before anybody's even aware it took place. That'd be a very powerful uh, automated process in the background that will uh, mitigate any client irritant or impact. On the quality assurance side of things, um, we plan to explore the CRI API capability a little more. Um, we know we can use it, we do in some cases, but I think there's more we can be doing. Uh, so we want to tie it into our automated pipeline. So when we're deploying an application, we want to automatically call that Sierra test case that's going to do all of our functional testing for us. And when we get to the point of deploying to prod, we want to have Sierra do some some um, PIV for us to make sure that you know the, the deployment was sound and that we're good to go. 
Um, and maybe, you know, another opportunity there would be if, if the test case does fail for whatever reason, then we have an automatic rollback of that deployment. So, you know, we've, like I said, we're starting to use it now, but I think there's a lot more we can do to really mature in, uh, in our automated approach to, uh, to, to application development and deployment. That's awesome. That's awesome. We are excited to go along in, in the journey with you and appreciate kind of the, the way you're, you're pushing us in certain ways as well. Um, I love the the desire to get down to the agent level, right? Help with routing. It's such a such a nubby, uh, a nubby part of the the operations. Um, and then thinking about how to continue to leverage our APIs, get as much as you can out of them. I think um, it sounds very very impressive and ex exciting. Well, I have to say, I think we're at time, but Ryan and Victor, thank you so much for joining us today and sharing your story with with myself and the audience. Um, Thank you to everybody who attended the session. We appreciate it. And please have a great rest of the day and enjoy the rest of the conference.